We are wrapping up our discussion tonight about the late Gwen Shamblin and also Remnant Fellowship. Lindsay has been joining us, called in as a former Remnant member. And Lindsay, you wanted to make sure that people knew there is a support group. There is. Uh, there is the Beyond Zion Foundation .org. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that is helping people who are survivors of any kind of abusive situation, but specifically cults. Um, our board consists of primarily Remnant Fellowship survivors, um, and I run a support group on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. So if you are a person who needs help getting out of Remnant Fellowship and you feel like you don't have anywhere else to turn, we are people who can help you. We have a lot of resources that are disposable at the moment. And give that website one more time. The Beyond Zion Foundation .org. Okay, very good. I wanted to ask you and Phil about where things stand right now post plane crash and now post docuseries coming out. Lindsay, what do you know about how the church is operating right now? So I only really get to hear through the grapevine what happens there. I do occasionally watch a webcast. From what I know, um, the people who want to be in charge would be Elizabeth Shamblin and Michael Shamblin. They've stated they're in charge. They have not come forward. They're avoiding going to services because a lot of members are kind of swarming to them for information that they don't really have. Of course, they're also grieving their family, and so their loss needs to be taken into consideration as well. But because of this um, gap in the power, a lot of larger families and members who have backgrounds in theology have kind of taken their aim at that main spot and are kind of enforcing the lifestyle continuously. And, and, what do you know? and I'm curious, well, what we've heard, all indications are that Gwen Shamblin had been grooming her daughter Elizabeth to, to be the successor. Um, now, w whether uh, Elizabeth has the charisma to, to be able to pull that off, is, I think, is an open question. Uh, and Lizzie, I'm curious, you knew about our reporting, correct? Correct. I grew up watching you guys. You guys were the enemy, according to Gwen Shamblin. So, and, and, and they used our videos? They showed your videos. They showed um, the, the, another video that would show a Passover whenever they talked about uh, people who were against the church. And, and, and why would they show those videos? Um, it was to kind of say that we're under attack. We need to stick to our guns. Um, there's a lot of people because we are the truth and we're the one true religion um, that people are going to come at us and that we're in end times, basically. Um, that anyone who is against the church is just proving the book of Revelation. Lindsay, I wonder, since this growing up in Remnant Fellowship was your childhood, where does your faith stand now? Um, I think because of the way that I found my way out, um, I believe that if there is a God, he made me the way that I am. There are undeniable truths about myself, the way that I experience purpose and love. And I, it, it's my goal to do everything with love and with compassion. And if there's a God out there who would like to send me to burn in hell for an eternity for that, um, I don't really want to worship him anyway. So I stand up for all the people who feel they don't really belong anywhere. Um, and that there's not a place on earth for them. There is. This is yours too. You were born here. You have a right to it. You have started this foundation to help people who have left, you said, abusive types of um, organizations, specifically for former Remnant Fellowship uh, members. What kind of consequences do former members suffer if they choose to leave? What happens to them? Um, you're pretty much erased. Um, I personally received a few death threats from children I grew up with when I left um, on Facebook. People told me that if they ever saw me in the area, they would beat me, they would assault me, they would kill me. Um, that I, I don't go to that area of Brentwood, Tennessee anymore, of course. Um, but a lot of other people have had severe legal repercussions. Some people have not been willing to speak out about the documentary because when they did leave the church, they lost everything that they knew. Um, and so it's really hard to build your life up from scratch when you've been so invested in that lifestyle and every single person in that church is your only connection to um, friendship and self-worth. So once all that is gone and you're left being a shell of a person, you really have to rediscover yourself. And that's a long and lengthy process. And, 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 and how do you convince someone to leave the, the church? I personally have not. Um, I've only kind of been an activist in this for a little bit. Um, my younger brother was out of the church for a while. Um, he was unfortunately killed last year, but um, he and I kind of bonded over and supported each other through those experiences. 
Um, and there are a number of other people in the church um, who left who were in my same age group. So we are all kind of connected and have that same um, attitude that we want to help people get out of the church. And I know there are people who come forward through the documentary who have met other members of the board from the foundation um, who are now kind of seeking help and we're working towards helping them get out of the organization. Lindsay, we certainly thank you for your time tonight. It has been enlightening and also heartbreaking, but thank you for calling in. And Phil, thank, thank you, you so for much. your time and, of course, going through all of your reports with us tonight. Again, just heartbreaking, really. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and you. if anyone has uh, information for us, uh, anything that we should investigate, uh, you can send an email to investigate at newschannel5.com, investigate at newschannel5.com, or call 615-244-NEWS. We'll be right back.